welcome to Open the Book. Do you remember last week's story? There were two best friends in that story and Helen told us all about David, who was a shepherd, and Jonathan, who was the son of a king. And they were best friends. And at the end of that story, we discovered that King Saul, Jonathan's father, was very jealous of David and he actually tried to kill him because he knew that David was going to be the next king after him. It must have been really difficult for David knowing that King Saul hated him and wanted to kill him, even when David had done nothing wrong. Sometimes he must have wanted to get his own back at King Saul. I wonder what will happen in today's story. I have a cloak and a dagger to help me tell today's story. So let's open the book and read a story called Run For Your Life. David ran. Some of David's loyal soldiers and friends ran with him. They ran up into the mountains far away from the city. They ran where it was rocky and dry, where only the wild animals went. They ran and hid in caves, always moving on, afraid to stay in one place for too long. Why were they always running? Why were they hiding in rocks and caves? Because of King Saul, because of his jealousy and fear and hatred for David. David, the hero whom everybody loved, except for Saul. He was afraid that David would try to be king instead of him. And so he kept on and on chasing David, trying to kill him. Month after month, this went on, running, hiding, running, hiding. But David prayed. He prayed to God all the time. He prayed that God would look after him and show him what to do next. And every time Saul's soldiers grew closer, God would answer David's prayer and warn him, telling him when to run and where to hide. One day, Saul found out that David was hiding in the wilderness. So he took 3,000 soldiers and set off to hunt him down. David and his loyal men ran this way and that. They found a cave they could hide in, a cave with a small entrance you hardly noticed from the outside, even though it was big inside. It was a good place for exhausted and frightened men to hide in. David kept watch and he prayed he asked God to show him what to do next. Hours went by and then down in the valley, David saw the soldiers coming with Saul leading them. He could believe his eyes. The soldiers were heading straight towards them. What should he do? Saul called out to his soldiers. We've lost the men and we'll never find them now. They must be miles away yourselves somewhere to rest. David and his friends watched from their cave. They watched Saul struggle up the hillside, leaving the soldiers behind. He was coming alone and he was heading straight towards the cave where David and his men were hiding. Oh no, groaned David. Why did he have to pick this cave? Quick, man! Hide right at the back of the cave. He won't notice us there. But David, one of his men said, surely this is the chance you've been waiting for. Here is Saul all on his own and he doesn't even know we are here. We could jump on him right now and kill him. And then you wouldn't have to keep running away. And as he said that, this man pulled out his dagger ready to kill Saul. 
No, said David, whispering, because Saul was very close. We have no permission from God to kill the king. We must not kill him. Whatever he has done to us, God will take him away at the right time. But give me your dagger. I have a better plan. Saul came closer. He came closer and closer until eventually he was so close the men could hear him yawning. Saul peered into the cave. It was dark and he could see no one. He found a comfy spot at the front of the cave and settled down for a rest. David crept forward with his dagger in his hand. He crept forward inch by inch. What was he planning? He reached forward carefully, carefully and cut off a piece of Saul's cloak with the dagger. Saul didn't feel a thing and David carefully, carefully crept back into the darkness of the cave. Saul got up and stretched. He had no idea what had happened and he started walking down the hillside. When he was some distance away, David leapt out of his hiding place. My king, said David, waving the piece of cloak. See what I have here, a piece of your cloak. I was so close to you in the cave just now that I could have killed you. But I chose to protect you. I'm not against you. I'm not a rebel. God must decide what happens to you, not me. Now do you believe that I wish you no harm? Saul could not believe his eyes and his ears. Oh, David, my boy, I have been wrong all this time. You have always treated me so well, even when I treated you really badly. You are right with God. And one day you will make a good king. So Saul called off his soldiers and left David alone for a while. Is that how you expected that story to finish? It's a strange story, isn't it? David knew that God was in control and that God would deal with bad old King Saul at the right time. In the Bible, there is a section of songs which we call Psalms. Most of them are written by David and he gives praise and thanks to God. In one of them, Psalm 18, he says, How I love you, Lord. You are my defender. You, Lord, are my protector, and with you I am safe. Feeling safe is when we know we are taken care of and that no harm can come to us. So let's sit quietly now and think about feeling safe. Maybe at home with your family, or maybe feeling safe in school. Now, I'm going to say a prayer. And if you want to make it your prayer, let's say Amen at the end after me. Dear God, thank you that David could feel safe because of you. Thank you that we can feel safe with you. 
Thank you for those who work to protect people from harm. Thank you for our families, for all those who look after us in school, and all those who look after us when we're unwell. Amen. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for listening. There's one more part to David's story, and you'll hear that next week. (music) 